Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and that little demo was played entirely on several types of wood blocks. And today, that's what we're going to be talking about. So here we have um, some basic wood blocks, but they're made out of different woods. And my goal today is to show you all different types of wood blocks, including plastic blocks and temple blocks. So these blocks right here are made of maple, and these are uh, typical of what you might buy today. Uh, from several companies like Grover, Vaughn Craft, Black Swamp, etc. Uh, and these wood blocks are made by uh, Equilibrium Percussion and they're a little different. They're much heavier and harder wood and they can be tuned and played super high. So whenever you have a part for tuned wood blocks, these are great. These wood blocks are not necessarily tuned to any particular pitch. Uh, they're just tuned high to low. So you might see a part for a piccolo wood block and then you'd reach for a smaller one. It's pretty pretty obvious. But saying that, there's no guarantee that if you buy a wood block the same size, it's going to sound the same. So take these two wood blocks, almost exactly the same size, same manufacturer, and same wood, maple, and they sound different. softer mallet. Okay, so there's no guarantee uh, that it's going to be exactly the same pitch because again, they're made out of wood and certain kinds of wood are harder than others and even the same species you might run across uh, different hardnesses. So definitely before you buy something you might want to listen to it. So a wood block is uh, basically just a block of wood with a groove cut through, which we'll call the mouth of it, just like in a cowbell, all right? And it's made normally with a router. Now, I I've used to make wood blocks, and I have a few here I'll show you, but when I made them, I used what's called a plunge router, which is a router that, uh, you know, you take your workpiece, clamp it into place, take your router, and this router plunges down after you start it. So you start it up, plunge it down, and then move forward. You can't use a regular non-plunge router to make these because you, have to, you would have to start on the edge and therefore you wouldn't have the surrounding part here. Hope that's clear, okay? You can make them on a router table. If you do that, you have to start the block like this, and lower it, which is a little bit dangerous, and then move it forward, and you have to know when to stop, so you have to put a stop block in there. So anyway, uh, it's an easy thing to make if you're, if you're somewhat handy, if you want to make your own. That being said, um, the main manufacturers make such good wood blocks. So by the time you get a block of wood, you know, that's, you know, two and a half to three inches thick, and you do all that, you may want, just want to buy one, okay? Now I can show you a few that I've made over the years. Okay, so um, this is a block that I made. And this is, uh, again, I made it with a router. It's just a piece of oak, all right? And I made this out of um, an old table leg. I was throwing away a table, and I had these big table legs, and I cut them up, and I made uh, wood blocks out of them. And I gave them to friends. This is many years ago. It's the only one I have left, and I put some holes in there so I could mount it, uh, and I put some holes in here so I could mount it. So while we're there, let's talk about mounting. There's three different ways to mount a wood block. So, the first way is to use a contraption like this. So this is an, an old wood block mounting device. It only works on the wood blocks that have the holes. And you can put it in there like this. They spread out to um, allow for different wood blocks. And then just sits in there like that. And then you can put it right on your drum set. Okay? It's supposed to go the other way like that. All right. The next way is a double holder. I think I showed you this when I did my cowbell um, video. But uh, this is for a cowbell on this shaft and then a wood block on here. The only problem with these things is sometimes these are not wide enough for all wood blocks. So as you see there, that's a problem. So be careful when you buy these mounting things. They still make them. You can still get them. You can put a wood block and a cowbell on there. The final thing for a wood block is this, my favorite. This is a wood block tray mount. 
So you take your wood block and put it in there. And then I put some Velcro onto there, as you see, to keep it from bouncing around. Velcro is your best friend if you're a percussionist. Always have some around. And that's it. Okay? It does not take away from the sound of the block at all. And you can put it anywhere you need to on the drum set. I have several of these, and uh, you know sometimes I'll stack them on top of each other. But it's, it's great. Okay? I'm not sure who makes it, but I'm sure you could find one that looks like it or make one. Okay. So, now, the old wood blocks, the original wood blocks, like this Ludwig from the um, probably 1960s, I've had this one since I was a kid. Uh, these sound different than the modern wood blocks. So if you listen to this, it's got, it's got its own sound. It's definitely a character of sound. If you listen to these, so that's much louder, much more pure of sound. Okay, because it's a bigger piece of wood and you have a thinner piece of wood here on top of the mouth. That being said, these have a character, like I said, with sticks. Whereas these with sticks sound like this. Okay, so I would probably try to get my hands on an older wood block like this. They still make them. And also have one like this. It's just a different sound for the older things. If you play some old shows, some old Dixieland kind of stuff, this is kind of the sound that you want. It's not as pure, but it's got character, okay? Now I made one like that years ago with a, with a mortise on my, my drill press. Didn't come out very good, I was experimenting, but... Okay? So anything that's a block of wood with a, whole, a mouth in there, is going to sound like like a woodblock. So I would say, you know, if you're handy with tools, you got some things, just try it. It's kind of fun, and um, you know, you might you might get a good good woodblock out of it. So that brings us to our next topic: fixing woodblocks. What happens inevitably with some woodblocks is they break. Um, I, I had trouble with these uh, early Vaughncraft wood blocks. They would break. Uh, these are mahogany. They were very fragile. Uh, here's a broken one so you could hear it. I'll play it with a softer mallet. So you hear that's pretty dead. And that's what it sounds like. So wood blocks are very prone to break along the edge here. This one cracked there. They will less seldom crack in the middle there. Okay. Now, if they break, you can fix them. So what you do is this. First of all, if it does crack, you'll probably be able to see the crack. You use a magnifying glass, but it's pretty obvious. And again, first look on the edges and then look on the top. You'll know when it's cracked because it'll have that dead sound that I just showed you. So what you do is you open it up. You usually will be able to do this like that. Then you take some wood glue. Gorilla glue works great. Put it in there and take a clamp, a small clamp. This is a really small clamp. And then you clamp it like that. All right. And then you kind of um, get the excess glue off there. After you clamp it, it's going to squeeze out. Now, once you clamp it, even if it's clamped, it sounds better than it did before. Okay. And once that glue's in there, filling in that crack. It's not like new, but it's better. Now, you can also use the same technique for marimba and xylophone bars. If, if you crack a low, really low C on a marimba, uh, you can find it. So what you have to do, though, unfortunately, you have to hit it with a rubber mallet first to find the crack. It's really hard to find a crack on a marimba bar. And then you could fill it in glue with glue and then clamp it together. And sometimes you can get it back to, you know, 90% of the sound you had before because those bars are very very expensive so that's how you do it but they, they you got to split it now don't use uh use a heavy rubber rubber mallet don't use a flooring mallet and please don't use a, um, a hammer okay because that'll ruin the bar or the wood block so that's how you fix these now i wanted to show you the difference in sound between the same wood block one that's broken and one that's not 
So here's one that's not, and here's one that is. Okay, so if you, if you get a woodblocker, you buy one, and it sounds like this, you might think that, oh, that's the way it sounds. No, it doesn't sound like that, especially if it's one of these really well-made Vaughn crafts. Okay, they're, they're really nice, and it should sound like this. Okay, and a lot of these old Vaughn crafts even have the, um, the hole we were talking about, okay, in there for your mount. These, oh, by the way, these Grovers do not have that. What they do have, though, is a screw here where you could put your rod for the um, holder. And that goes right in there, and it's really great. And it does not affect the sound too much. I highly recommend that. It's one of the reasons I like these Grover Woodblocks. And they're on either side. So you can mount it either way, which is super handy. Okay? So those are... Uh, that's another option for mounting that I forgot about before. So uh, be careful when you're buying wood blocks, especially used, that they're not cracked. Ask for a sound file. If you get it and it sounds like that, what I just showed you, then see if you could send it back. It's important. Now, these little wood blocks made by Equilibrium are, are uh, sort of tuned, not to a specific note, but they're numbered. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can hear that. Okay, um, there actually this is eight, seven is not to be found today. <laughs> I don't know if I lent it to someone or left it at the concert hall, but um, I'm looking for it. So we're missing one, but I normally have eight. I bought eight of them, so. Okay, they're, they're really cool. Sometimes you, uh, you have to play tuned woodblock parts. You know, not tuned again to specific notes, but just, um, pitches that are high to low. Now, one thing you'll see here is that I put this apparatus on this piece of foam. This is a piece of acoustic foam made by Oralex. It's got the pyramids on the bottom. I use these, this in the studio a lot when I record and always under percussion instruments like wood blocks because if I don't, they're going to rattle on the table like this. Hopefully you can hear that rattling, the sound of the table. If you put them on a, a piece of foam like this, there won't be any sound but the sound of the wood block. All right. So those are um, really nice wood blocks if you can get your hand on some for tune wood blocks. Now let's talk a little about mallets. So the softest mallet I'll normally use on wood blocks is this Vaughncraft mallet it's got some sort of stocking material and probably some rubber underneath and they sound really nice for those mellow parts all right and on these now these mallets i like as well these are called Becker Blues, that's what we call them. Uh, they're xylophone mallets, and they're made for solo xylophone, so it's not too harsh. And it's, it's a um, hard rubber, so that, here's what these sound like. All right. And the, uh, the last hardest option uh, are these plastic mallets. These are Glock mallets, bell mallets. You need to be careful you don't dent or break the woodblock with these. This will break them, so. All right, so that's totally an option to use, um, but be careful because the actual material of the mallets is harder than the wood blocks, and you're always asking for trouble then. The last thing you can use is a stick. Uh, sticks make great um, mallets to, or, or you know, sticks to hit the wood block with. Uh, sometimes we want that sound, so.
Now, when I'm using a stick, I prefer a small round tip. This, these are my drum set sticks, so they sound fine. If you're looking for a very light sound, uh, you can go with the stick. And sometimes conductors will ask for that sound. Not a mallet, but a stick. So I'm going to go ahead and set up some plastic blocks. Uh, you can call them plastic wood blocks, but they're, they're not wood. And then we'll keep going. So here are some plastic blocks. Uh, they're a good replacement for wood blocks for a few reasons. First of all, they will not break. I have never even come close to breaking one. And I've used plexiglass bass drum beaters on them, <laughs> okay, for when I use them with my left foot. So if you don't want to break a wood block and you want something for your drum set that you can play pretty hard on, I think the plastic ones are probably the way to go. There are some things that aren't so great about them. First of all, they can pretty much only get one sound, and that is played on the edge of the block. Again, you see the sound chamber there, okay? So if you compare that to a real wood block, it's very similar, all right? Not bad at all. but. When you play with a mallet on top of it, that's where you lose your sound, okay? It's not terrible, but it's not nearly as big sounding uh, and pure sounding as a real wood block. Also, when you play it with sticks on the top, like this, versus this, You're not able to get two of those different distinct sounds. Here you're just getting this. So it's not as versatile, but it is totally functional. And I own a lot of these, as you can see, because I do use them, especially on the drum set. And in percussion setups, when I can't change mallets quickly, so if I'm playing xylophone or glock, and you know sometimes I have to literally use a brass mallet on a woodblock, and I'm not going to do that on one of these. So if the Glock part calls for brass mallets and then you got to play wood block at the same time or right after it, you need to go with plastic block. All right, so we'll put these this aside. And just uh, as far as a temple block goes, this sound can only be created by the uh, largest of the plastic blocks. All right, so if you want a temple block sound, you're going to need to get yourself this big purple guy, and maybe this red one. That's still closer to the woodblock range. But this isn't bad for, for a replacement for a temple block. It's also got this scraper thing. Not sure when I would use that, but it's there. Okay, so that's the comparison with the temple block. Now, these blocks are really uh, neat because they mount with this apparatus here, I'm sure you've all seen it, or most of you, and that can unscrew and go either on the middle, on this side, or on that side. So you're not short for mounting options. And then you could put that um, metal rod in there, and any size rod, and extend it anywhere. So mounting-wise, these are very easy to mount. Now there's several sizes of these LP plastic blocks, which is what I favor. And the ones I have are the orange one, the little orange one. Now you see there's a piece of moleskin on there. I use this for a clave block on my left foot. All right. That's, the, that's why that's there. All right. And um, I have certain bass drum beaters that are made for this. You can buy them that are made for playing uh, foot clave. This is my other block that I kind of, uh, this was an old granite block that came off a set of, plastic temple blocks that I had, and I mounted it with a piece of wood here, so it's more solid. So this is my lower version. So I use that as well for a clave block. But these blocks range in pitch from here So 
you got four distinct tones. If you get all four of them, you got yourself a set of tuned wood blocks or plastic blocks. Almost, almost temple block sounding. So they're versatile. Then we have these kind of open LP blocks. I don't care too much for these. They are pretty loud though, so not bad. I have a few of these. And then these, this kind of little go go block. It's a nice alternative actually to a go go's. It's much drier and they do have a pretty good pitch. All right. And then we have these pearl wood uh, plastic blocks. Sorry. I like these a lot too. They sound really good. And I like the mounting choice here because you can slide it. That's really cool. So that's innovative. All right. So there's two of these. A high and a low. So I've used these often too. They're very similar to the LPs. They're pretty much the same, you know. So I would definitely invest in one or two plastic blocks, a high one and a low one. They're great for timbali setups as well and drum set setups, but they are no replacement for a real wood block. So we'll be right back with temple blocks. So here are some temple blocks, several different kinds. Uh, some are solid wood that's carved out, hollowed out, like these Chinese blocks. Then we have the plywood blocks that are basically constructed from plywood and then glued together. And then we have these laminated Ludwig blocks that are actually pretty good if you could find them. Uh, here's what they sound like. Here's a smaller one. So they're very good, actually. Uh, they're hard to find. I have a set of these as well. So the difference, obviously, between a wood block and a temple block is a wood block is one solid piece of wood normally, but it's just got this one groove in it and it's got a lip on top, okay, and a larger body. So the temple block, however, has a bigger resonating chamber inside, so it's going to be lower in pitch. And to get a higher pitch on a wood block and most notably a temple block, you have to make them much smaller. So you see the massive range here between this really large one and the really tiny one. I'll play those for you if I can get in here. So these Chinese blocks are made from one piece of wood. They're hard to get off because they're heavy. There we go. So there you go. Take a look at that. Beautiful. Now they're called Chinese blocks, I think, uh, well they were back in the old days, because um, they had Chinese uh, artwork on them. They were ported and painted. You might see in some old pictures some red ones. Uh, and they were imported. So people used to call them Chinese blocks, but they are temple blocks, okay? And these are, like I said, hand carved. And I have several of these. This is a set of seven I put together for a contemporary piece that the symphony was doing several years back. It actually called for eight, so I had to have another one on a, on a separate stand uh, to get all the pitches. I've made this stand out of angle iron. I got it Lowe's or Home Depot, one of the two, and very easy to make and then put an old clamp on there. And then these are temple block clamps that you can buy that are great for all kinds of things. Even Wiro's, you can clamp a Wiro. So that's how that's connected onto the stand. Now the plywood temple blocks, as you see here, two different sets are also really well made. Well, I should say certain brands are well made. They sound really good. These are Ohm percussion, O-M. I'm not sure if they're still in business. You might want to check them out. To me, they were the best temple blocks of this type, the plywood blocks, ever made. I have two sets of them, and they're both great. They both sound a little different, so. Yeah. 
if you compare those to these blocks, all right, that high one, it's hard to reach, but you need a um, almost a harder mallet to make it speak. It's kind of like on a marimba or xylophone, as you go up on the instrument, you have to use a little bit of a harder mallet to make the bar speak, so. Now I would caution you about using hard mallets on th this kind of tempo block. They'll, they break very easy and they're hard to get, so you don't want to break them. I really recommend these Vaughn Craft mallets again. That's what I like. Or a hard uh, marimba mallet that's yarn wrapped. You can even use a vibe mallet that's cord wrapped. That's fine too. But be careful. You do not want to use these plastic mallets on there unless it's super quiet very quiet okay so this is your best bet and in a pinch if you have to play louder you can play with these becker blues but don't lay into the instrument now on these blocks you can use these uh, with no problem and the difference here is Okay, so um, these Von Kraft mallets are, are really good for that. Now, the ones on top here, I think these are a set of, yes, Grover uh, Temple Blocks 3. And these are great if you have to have a big setup and you can't fit uh, five Temple Blocks. Uh, probably shortly here, I'll be doing a video on Broadway setups for percussion because I just had a show canceled and I was practicing it for a month and then it got canceled because of the pandemic. So I might as well get something out of it. So I left it set up so I can, I'll do a video for you guys to show you, but you have to be able to fit all this stuff into really tight places, drum set and timpani and metal instruments and all that. So these work great for that. The other option is to use things like this that are individually mounted. Um, these are pearls. I'm not crazy about these because they do break. Um, where is it? Here it is. I've had them split, uh, not because of playing, but because of the weather. In the winter, I left these at the college, and um, the you know the um, it's so dry there they just split, so the glue came undone. I got to fix that. But anyway, I don't know if we'll be able to hear it. Yeah, it sounds bad. So top is better. So I used to like these, but now that they're splitting pretty much all over. That one's still okay. I don't like them as much. Okay, but uh, they are pretty, pretty nice as individual blocks. Uh, these are hard to mount individually unless you have the, the separate mount like we have there. So, uh, one more thing before we go. These are handheld temple blocks used in uh, Brazilian music sometimes. Uh, I really love these things. Uh, I do not remember where I got them. I've had them so long, <coughs> excuse me. I use them on a lot of recordings. So they're not very loud, but they sound great. So these are handheld temple blocks. And I've seen things like this before, but never this particular kind. All right, so I'll play a little temple blocks and then we'll, um, we'll call it a day. <laughs> 